Are you excited to serve a risen Savior this morning? Amen. 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 Church, if you will, let's go ahead and lift our hands and surrender to our Savior this morning. Jesus, right now, we come before you humbly but boldly. Jesus, thank you so, so much for the sacrifice that you made on the cross for our sins. Holy Spirit, we pray that you would be here with us right now. We come to worship you and you alone. God, we give you the praise and the glory that you deserve. God, may our worship be right and pleasing to you this morning. May our minds and hearts be focused and surrendered to you in all that we do, but especially here this morning. I pray a special blessing on this service and these people that we will be drawn closer together as we're drawn closer to you, God. And we ask all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Church, let's worship together.
a few moments and, and turn around and shake hands with a few people before you have a seat. You may be seated. We will watch some video announcements. Hello there, everyone, and welcome to First Assembly of God right here in Broken Bow. My name is Pastor Tyler, and thank you so much for joining us today for our service. We can't wait to continue in a time of worship with you and hear a word from our pastor. But first, let's take a look at this week's announcements and what's going on in the life of the church. We have multiple ways that you can give your tithes and offering today. You can go to our website at brokenbowfirst.org slash giving. There are baskets up at the front or there's boxes in the back of the sanctuary. Thank you so much for your giving and your faithfulness. We want to give a special welcome to all of our first-time guests this morning. If you're a first-time guest, make sure you pick up a welcome bag as you exit today and meet us in our connection room just south of the main lobby. We would love to connect with you and get to know you a little bit better after service. Thanks again for joining us today at First Assembly of God. We hope you feel right at home. Our focus night is tonight at 6 p.m. here in the main sanctuary. We invite you back tonight for a great time of prayer, worship, and an encouraging word from one of our staff pastors. Our women's ministry will be having their monthly women's fellowship tomorrow night at 6.30 p.m. in the FLC. This will be a great time of food, discussion, and a canning class this month for all of you ladies. Please bring $5 to cover the cost of materials. Ladies, you don't want to miss out on this night. If you have any questions, you can see Renee Short. We will be hosting a mega sports camp for all of our kids August 2nd through August 5th. We are also in need of volunteers and coaches to make this event possible. If you are interested, there is a sign-up sheet available in the lobby. And if you have any questions, you can see our kids pastor, Crystal Hoover. That is all the announcements we have for this week. If you'd like to find out more about these or any other upcoming events or announcements, you can go to our website at brokenbowfirst.org, check us out on our Facebook page, or of course, watch us on YouTube. God bless you today. We hope you enjoy the rest of your service. Church, if you would let stand so we can continue in a time of worship. Proverbs 3 says, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge Him and He will make your paths straight. He didn't say He was going to make the path easy. He didn't say He was going to make the path perfect. He said that if we trusted Him and surrendered to Him, he would tell us where to go. He would make it very clear the path that we needed to take. And so church, if you are seeking clarity on anything this morning, I pray that this next song becomes your prayer of surrender and surrendering that situation, that relationship, whatever it may be to the Lord. So as we continue in our time of worship, if you would, let's just raise our hands and may we um, posture our heart into that of surrender. God, we just thank you so much for your faithfulness to us. Lord, in whatever we're facing, you have promised that if we surrender to you, that we will not be alone, that you will make our path very clear, that you will make it straight, that you will direct our path, that you will guide us, that you will keep us in your perfect will. Jesus, we worship you and we praise you for that this morning.
trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. And He will make your path straight. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. And He will direct your path or make your way straight. They were singing that song. I was picturing in my mind as Veronica was leading it, and I want to ask her to do that again. I was thinking about this song and climbing this mountain. Some of you may have a mountain in front of you that just maybe seems insurmountable. It seems impossible. Maybe it's a decision. Maybe it's a, I don't know, whatever it might be. There's a something in your path, though. trying to climb that mountain with your hands all clenched that's almost impossible to do it's almost impossible to do you can't get a good hold on things you can't make get a good grip on things you can't move forward with your hands all tied up but if you'll open your hands you'll be able to grasp hold of things that will help you to maneuver yourself up that path of that mountain. And not only that, but you'll be able to receive what God has for you with your hands open. So as, Veronica, if you'll sing that again this morning, would you not, uh, would you just do something, would you worship the Lord this morning? Not with your hands folded or clasped, but your arms reached out to him and your hands wide open for whatever God has for you in your life this morning just worship him one more time would you do that I feel this verse is for somebody today maybe you've got some decisions to make or whatever but you're you got a mountain in front of you and you just don't know how you're going to do it I just want you to know that God's going to help you if you'll just open up your arms to him this morning would you do that
sometimes because we want to hold on to things but you would say to us this morning to let go and just give it to you to trust you with whatever we're going through whatever we're facing just to trust you Lord you'll make our path straight and you'll guide our steps and you'll give us the answers that we need and we long for. Father, we thank you today. Thank you this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated this morning. Amen. 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 Beautiful songs this morning. Good selection. Good to have you with us this morning. Good to have our guests with us today as well. We are glad that you're here today and believing that God has brought you here for a purpose this morning to speak to your heart. You know, we uh, know that you could be anywhere and, and we are so glad that you have chosen to be with us this morning. Don't forget to come back tonight for our services. Uh, I think Brother Nestler is going to be preaching this evening, so come back and not only listen to what he has to say and what word he has from the Lord for us, but just to support him and uh, show our love for them. I would need you to be praying for Nestor and Jasmine. They are facing some pretty high mountains themselves. Uh, Jasmine's R1 has expired. And uh, if we don't hear from somebody uh, by September 1st, Jasmine and the children will be having to go back to Mexico for a period of time. We don't know what that period of time would be. It's sort of a open-ended thing. But uh, Nessar's R2 
one has been extended and uh, he is in good shape but it's almost like the roles reversed back from a few years ago when Nestler had to go back and Jasmine was able to stay well now the roles are that Jasmine will have to go back to Mexico and the children and uh, we just need a breakthrough here we need an answer we have been uh, Nestler and I have been contacting everybody uh, but President Biden and that's probably the one we ought to contact He's pretty, he's pretty loose about it, but uh, <laughs> he's, pretty, he's pretty free about this. But uh, we've contacted senators and attorneys and, and whoever we know to immigration and all this sort of thing, and, and we've just gotten a brick wall. So we need a breakthrough there. So would you pray with us that God will give us a favorable response and a favorable answer? If we can get something back, we've already applied for all the paperwork, but we just need the, the answer. And we need to, and we feel there's no reason for there not to be anything, but right now it's just in being held up with all the government paperwork. So we just need your prayers, and uh, they would appreciate that so much. Starting a new series this morning, All Things Water. Uh, all Things Water. Uh, just uh, going to do a series the next six or so weeks or so about things that pertain to water. Uh, sort of summertime brings you the idea of water. Uh, Kim and I just got back from Florida not long ago and uh, planning on going back next week and three weeks from now we'll go back again and now I'm teasing. I, we love the ocean but uh, uh, I'm going to do a series about things that pertain to water and stories that go along with those lines. And uh, so this morning I'm going to, my, the topic of my, mes my message today is how thirsty are you? How thirsty are you? Uh, I was outside working in the yard yesterday and mowing the yard and working in the, my shop building out there. Uh, it's hot, it's sort of overcast, but it's hot and humid and Kim, uh, she's messing around doing things with her flower beds and stuff like that. And one of her things she always does, I, said, I always tell her, I said, Kim, make sure you come and check on me every so often. Make sure I'm all right. And, and she'll bring me water. And make, she, she's very good about making sure I've got plenty of water to drink and, and, uh, because it's hot and humid outside. So she brings me water to drink. You know, God designed our bodies to need water. We need water. In fact, about 60% of the human body, I think, is made up of water. 60%. We can't thrive, we can't survive more than, more than a few days. You can't survive without water very long. You just can't do it. Uh, you know, we, we fast sometimes, but we always try to encourage you to drink plenty of fluids when you're fasting because you can't survive without water. It's even less than a few days when it's hot and humid like it is here. Virtually every, every part and every function of the human body depends on water. Water to function properly for us to be healthy. We need water to thrive in our lives. We need water to thrive. But more than thriving, we need water to simply survive. To just merely survive, you need water. And we need more than just water. You know, the body's natural, God-designed response is the thirst. When you get out there working in the yard or whatever the case might be, and your, your natural body will tell you, you need to drink something. You need to drink something. When the body hydration system begins to shut down a little bit, and gets out of balance, it needs more water. And the central nervous system will send messages, alerts to your brain like, hey, idiot, drink some water. It has to tell me because I just forget. I just get out there, get carried with Kim McCain out there yesterday. I just forget to drink. I don't even have him out there with me or anything and my mower. And I just forget. I just get tied up doing it and I just forget to drink. But your brain will send a signal that you need to drink water. Drink water. And because your body is craving these fluids, these, this moisture. And when we feel thirsty, we know that we need something to drink. We know we need something to drink. And we don't need a doctor to tell us that we need something to drink. Your body will tell you that you need something to drink. But it's not just physical that we have this yearning for. We are also 
spiritual beings. And just as the physical body thirsts for water, the Bible tells us that we are designed to thirst for the Spirit. Thirst for the Spirit. John chapter 7, verse 37. On the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. And this he said about the spirit with whom he, who, whom those who believed in him were to receive. For as yet the spirit had not been given because Jesus was not yet glorified. Jesus is issuing a totally open-ended invitation to everyone within the sound of his voice, just like I am this morning, to come to him and drink. Come and drink. And the only qualification you have is thirst, to be thirsty. We have before us one of the most, I think one of the most challenging and uh, remarkable statements in the New Testament. What does Jesus mean here? To come and drink of him. What's he saying to those who are gathered on that day? These words were spoken by Jesus to people who were spiritually dry, empty, barren, and defeated. That's who he was talking to. There were people just like many of us this morning, going through religious ceremonies and religious rituals, but finding no meaning in their life, no real purpose, no victory, nothing going on inside. John chapter 7 tells us that Jesus' statement talks about living water, rivers of living water, in reference to the Holy Spirit. Well, the church needs to be reminded today of the purpose and the power of the third person of the Trinity. Amen? We need to be reminded of the Holy Spirit, and he wants to work within our lives and within your hearts every time you come to church. Amen? It seems the modern church today has replaced the power of God with the performance of man. And we need to get back to the Holy Spirit moving within our lives and with our means. The setting in which Jesus was talking here today in John chapter 7 was the story about the Feast of the Tabernacles. The Feast of the Tabernacles was a special occasion, a solemn day for the Jewish people, the Israelites. It reminded them of how they had journeyed in the wilderness. And during that period of 40 days and 40, uh, 40 years, during that journey of, of that period of time, God had provided for them time and time again. It was a reminder of that time that God had provided for them. During this seven-day feast, the Jews lived in tents of tree branches to commemorate their, their forefathers wandering through the wilderness. At the very heart of the feast was a daily procession. There was a daily thing that went on there. I want you to hold on to those words, daily, daily procession. I'll be getting back into this in just a minute. On each one of those seven days, the high priest would go to the pool of Siloam and draw out water into a golden vessel. This water would, be, would, he would bring it back to the church, the tabernacle, and pour it back out upon the altar where the parts of the sacrifice were being arranged. As the, as the water was poured out, the people would begin to rejoice and, and just have church, just have a worship service and a celebration that shout for joy of what God had done in their life. It was a great time of celebration and worship for the people. This kind of thing went on for seven days. The high priest would go back to the pool of Siloam each and every day, come back to the altar, pour out the water. Next day, he would do the same thing over and over again. But here Jesus does something a little different. The eighth day was called the great day of the feast. On this day, the priest would march around the altar seven times, commemorating Joshua leading the children of Israel around Jericho seven times. The priest would raise up the golden pitcher and pour, and seemingly appear, appear to pour out water. But in this case, on the eighth day, the pitcher was empty. There's no singing, no shouting, no rejoicing. They all stood in silence as the high priest, marching around seven times, would act like he was pouring out water. It was a moment of silence. This moment of silence and emptiness 
And meaningless is when Jesus stood up among them that day and he began to cry out. And when he spoke, thousands would have heard what he said and they would have understood the meaning of what he was trying to get across to them. Everyone who heard him instantly knew and understood what he was talking about. I think one of the great crowds, when I think of the great crowd of people that had gathered on that, that day annually to observe this, this was one of three festivals that the men in the church were obligated to attend. The Feast of Tabernacles was one of those. So there's this huge gathering on this occasion. Passover was one, Pentecost was the other, and the Feast of Tabernacles was this one. I think about these men and their families who had gathered there that day, their lives, their homes, their families had come, their communities in their mind. I think about what they brought with them to this great feast. I think, I think about what was going on in their lives. I think about the church and about your lives and about your families and what may be going on in your life and what you may be going through in your life as you come to church every Sunday. What's going on in your life? What are you, what are you experiencing? And I think about those men who came on this special occasion, the dreams that they may have held, the hopes that they had in their hearts, the expectations of what they were looking forward to God doing. I think about all that, and then I think about what they took away. When, when you leave this church today and every Sunday, well, you come with hopes and you come with dreams and you come with expectations, but when you leave here, what are you leaving with? What are you leaving with? Are, are you leaving any different than when you came? Say, well, that's up to you, Pastor. Preach us something good and make us feel good. Preach us happy. How many times have you heard, well, preacher, did you preach them happy today? I hope I never preach you happy. In fact, I hope I work something up inside you that you go away from here just a little bit with a little bit of angst. Just a little bit of something stirring inside of you. Because you see, the problem of the church is, we're all, is that we're all trying to get happy. And not changed. And I think of these men and these families, they came to their, their church service and, and they, did this, they, they did this ritual every Sunday. Sometimes we get that same idea, don't we? Church is just a ritual. We come every Sunday morning. We come on, just like it's clockwork, we, we get up, don't even have to set our alarm because you're just so anxious to get here. And we just come and we go through the motions, we, we, the priest goes and he goes around the altar, he gets water out, for something fresh to give, and he pours it. Y'all aren't getting this at all, are you? He gets that water, fresh, something fresh to pour out on the, the sacrifices that have been made, and they, he pours it out. And, but on this day, he went... But he didn't go to the pool of Siloam. He just went around the altar. And he went there and he had a, an action of pouring something out. But there was nothing there. And I think so often we come to church and we go through the motions. But yet nothing's ever changing in our lives. And we, nothing's ever different in our hearts. And we, we leave the same as we came. And that's the way they were. That's the way they were on that day. They were dry and they were empty. Life seemed to have no purpose. Jesus had been watching the people as this ceremony was done. He'd been watching them, and as they go through the motions, every day he'd been seeing them go through this motion with no meaning and no power and no life to them whatsoever. And they found themselves right where they started. On the eighth day, they were back where they started this thing at. Unfulfilled and empty in their life. And, and I look, look again at the text this morning and see what Jesus is saying to them. He, he opens up his heart to them and says simply, if any man thirst. I want you to look at the condition that was described here. You know, every promise has a condition. Every promise has a condition. And the condition here that you must meet is there must be a need in your life. There must be a need in your life. And he said this right here, if anyone thirst, come. That's the condition. I think it's important for us to understand what Jesus meant by thirst. He wasn't talking about 
literal physical thirst, that you were thirsty for something. He wasn't talking about that. What's worse than physical thirst is that we, that we, we don't recognize. Sometimes we don't recognize. When I'm out mowing the yard, I don't recognize that I'm thirsty. Kim has to come and remind me, hey, you need to drink something. What's worse than physical thirst that we don't recognize is that we fail to recognize a spiritual thirst within our life. We go through the motions, we go through the, the acts of it, but we fail to realize that, and recognize that we have a spiritual thirst. We know he's not talking about physical thirst. He's saying that the soul has something that is lacking in its life. Something more than physical thirst, but a spiritual thirst. Thirst is an unconsciousness of an, un, or a consciousness of an unsatisfied need. A consciousness, awareness of an unsatisfied need. When you go without water, when you go without water, your body gets thirsty. You get dehydrated. There's times when I come in from working outside and, and my body's just not feeling right and, and it's, I've gotten dehydrated. I hadn't drank anything all day and I gotten de have gotten dehydrated. Well, the soul is much the same way. When it goes without God... Our spirit gets thirsty. Gets thirsty. Your body was made to live on water. And your soul was made to live on God. To live on God. And without God in your life, without God actively stirring in your spirit, flowing in your life, you are going to die of thirst. So I ask you this morning, are you thirsty? Are you thirsty? If you don't know you're thirsty, you won't do anything about it. And that's what happens so often in our church. We come to church and we fail to recognize that we're spiritually thirsty. We fail to recognize that we're spiritually thirsty. We just come and we do the same thing. We go through the same motions. We shake people's hands. We put this, we plaster this smile on their face because we don't want anybody to know that we may be going through a mess. But inside, we're, we're dying, and we're dry, and we're spiritually thirsty. So are you thirsty for more of God in your life? This is the condition I'm asking you this morning. Look what the invitation was. If any man thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Come to me and drink. Notice that the invitation was not to attend church service. If any man thirsts, just come to the church. He didn't say that. He doesn't, if it, it's not to come to a program or a meeting or a Bible study or a church service. The, the invitation was to come and to drink. You're to come to church. You, you, know, you know, you can still come to church and be dry and barren and empty. You can come to, you can come to church every time the doors are open and be dry and empty. You can even go through worship service and act like you're worshiping God and still be dry and empty. It was an invitation not to come to church, but to come to a person. If any man thirst, let him come to me. Come to me. It's an act of our will. It's a decision that you must make. It's an expression of trust in your life. It's a recognition in your life that there is a need and a helplessness there. And it's a change of direction for your life. So Jesus says simply to the people gathered that day. And he doesn't say it quietly. He cried out. He cried out. Do you want water? Are you thirsty? Do you want life? Do you want streams? Then come and drink from me. And as a result of that coming to him, Jesus made a promise to them. If any man thirsts, let him come to me and drink. And out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Literally, he's saying, when they say this, that it's out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Out of our innermost being, call it belly, call it heart, whatever version you're reading, it changes with each one. Belly, heart, soul, spirit, whatever it is, he's saying, with out of your innermost being, there will be an eruption of his living water. What does it mean? What does it mean? It means when you come to Jesus and drink, you just don't get a single drink of water. When Kim brings me my big OU mug, 
It's about a gallon of water, I think. When she brings it out there, I don't just take a sip of it, but I drink almost the whole thing. Almost the whole thing. Jesus is not offering a sip of water this morning. He's not offering you a sip of water. A sip of water may do you something for the, a small period of time. It may quench a small thirst for a period of a moment or two. But he's not offering just a single drink. He's offering you a spring, a fountain, a well springing up within you this morning. He didn't promise a trickle or a small stream or a flow, but he offered you a river of living water. What a picture of the Holy Spirit that he's wanting to pour out into your life. What a picture he's giving to us. Those who come to Christ find living water that satisfies the deep thirst within. Only he can do that. Only Christ can satisfy the longing of your heart and meet the need that you're struggling with in your life. Only Christ can satisfy that deep need within your life. Notice the word flowing. Notice the word flowing. An overflowing spring of clear, clean, cool, refreshing water. There's nothing like that. It reminds you of a, of a rapids, in a river in Colorado, maybe that nice cold stream coming down from the mountains there. It sort of reminds you of something vibrant, something that's active. Cool, clean, refreshing. Streams without pollution. Clean. Rivers that never run dry. That never run dry. <laughs> That's what I need in my life. A river that never runs dry. Something that keeps me going all the time. You know, it's sad that we as believers ride a, a spiritual roller coaster. Because I don't, and, and I'm guilty. Anybody else? We ride a spiritual roller coaster. Do you believe for one moment that that is the life that God intended for you to live? That you would be up and down and up and down and up and down? I don't believe that's what he wants for your life. I don't believe that's what he wants for my life. I believe that he wants to give us a river, a stream of everlasting, ever fulfilling water in our life. Fresh water all the time. Never running dry and living water that never becomes stagnant. How many of you sometimes get a little stale in your relationship with God? A little stale. It's always produced, this water that he's promising to us produces a dynamic, abundant, exciting new life. Fresh life, fresh life. There's nothing like the freshness of the Holy Spirit in your life. The Holy Spirit is God's answer to the deep inner thirst within our hearts. When you're running low, Spiritually, when you're running low physically, you want to go grab a glass of ice cold water. Anybody drink hot water? I, I, I want cold water. I want it ice cold water. When I'm thirsty, I want some cold water. I know some people don't drink ice in their water. I don't know what's wrong with you. You're not even saved, are you? I want cold water. Well, you know what? The, the Spirit of God is the same way in our lives. God is, is offering us the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. And he's the, he's the answer to the deep longing thirst within our spiritual souls. We need that. And we, can, we, we need it on a daily basis. When he comes into our life. He comes with a, like a river rushing across dry ground. Just rushing across there. He pours out his blessings and our lives begin to blossom again. You know, it's, it's pretty dry outside or it had been until last night, right? And I was, I was wondering about the river that would be flowing down my yard this morning because it rained pretty heavy last evening and, and uh, early this morning. But the ground is so dry, it soaked it up just like that. You know, there's times that our lives become so dry that when the Holy Spirit comes, we just soak him up. But the, and that's a good thing, but it doesn't have to be that way. See, God can provide you a constant flowing of his spirit in your life. That is a constant refreshment to you when you're hungry and you're thirsty. No one needs to stay dry. You don't need to be dry. You don't need to be, you don't need to be empty or you don't need to be thirsty. We weren't made to live in a desert barren place. God's river 
was intended to flow into your lives, quenching our thirst and filling our emptiness. Now remember the words I asked you to hold on to, this daily procession that they made? It's an invitation for us to drink daily of the life-giving water. Drink, drink daily of it. Drink often of it. Drink all the time. As much as you can. As often as you can. Drink of this living water in your life. Because there's no reason for you to be dry. Well, Pastor, you just don't understand what I'm going through. No, I don't. I don't understand what I go through sometimes. And I find myself empty. And I find myself dry. And I find myself just dry inside and longing and thirsty for something. When that happens, I need to rebuke myself because I need to come back to the Holy Spirit and let Him fill my longing one more time. Drink daily. Drink daily from this fountain of living water. So as I close this morning, I want to ask you, just write out, what about your life this morning? What about your life? Are you weary and worn out? Has life taken its toll on you? Or are you vibrant and victorious? What kind of life are you living? Are you weary and dreary? Or are you vibrant and victorious? Is there a living, flowing happening in your life right now? Are you flowing in the spirit of the Lord? Fresh, vibrant in your life. Fern, if you'll come to the piano and play something this morning. As I look at this verse, I had to kick myself around my office a few times. Because when I read it, I thought, is any man thirsty? And I just put my name in there. Are you thirsty, Terry? And honesty forces me to tell you this morning there. That in my, in my life, sometimes that refreshing water is simply a trickle. Just a small trickling of water. And sometimes my life has been a drought. Dried up streams. No life. No life giving. Just a dried up stream. Occasionally there's been a creek of living water. A little bit of stream that will trickle through, but, but flowing. The promise that he gave us. Are you thirsty? Come to me and drink. For out of your heart or your bellies shall flow, flow. Flowing abundant rivers. I ask myself, Terry, are there... Are there abundant rivers flowing from your life? I had to say no. Lord, no, there's not. There's not abundant rivers. There's not life-giving water flowing out of my life. There's not life-giving water flowing into my life. But Jesus' words, come unto me and drink, gives me hope gives me hope and I ought to give you hope and in my life if my life doesn't match the description that Jesus is telling us that out of our bellies or out of our hearts shall flow living living water then if it doesn't he tells us that it can your life can have life giving waters my life can and your life can we really can experience consistent fullness of joy in our life I didn't say fullness of happiness. I said fullness of joy. Life offers you and barters with you this idea of happiness. Well, I'm just not happy. Not happy with my pastor. Not happy with my church. Not happy with my job. Not happy with my wife. Not happy with my husband. Not happy with my family. Not, I'm not, I'm not ha nothing's making me happy. Well, guess what? Snap your suspenders. That's what life offers you is happiness. 
But Jesus offers you abundant joy. Abundant joy. Something that flows from your life and into your life. So we can experience this consistent fullness of joy that flows in us, but also flows from us. flows from us from us to others are you are you drinking in of the Holy Spirit in your life daily a freshness of his spirit and are you also pouring out of your life into the lives of others a flow that comes from him you stand to your feet this morning I want to ask you I want to ask you to examine your heart with all honesty just like I've done this week just like I've done I want to ask you to do the same thing I want you to ask yourself is there life giving waters flowing into my heart is there an abundant flowing river into my life this morning if not, there can be. So I ask you today, are you thirsty? Are you thirsty? Are you thirsty? Is there, is there a constant flowing in your life and a constant flowing out of your life of the abundant supply that he offers us today? I don't know about you, and I'm thirsty I'm thirsty if there's not that supply flowing in your life would you come and drink this morning would you come and drink this morning and I want to tell you something we've been hesitant about coming to the altar because of COVID let me tell you COVID's dead so you can come to the altar and you need to come to the altar because at that altar there's a freshness of water that God wants to offer to you this morning so if you're thirsty would you come and drink this morning would you come and drink this morning if there's not a flow coming into your life and a flow going out of your life to other people then you need to come and drink this morning God's offering you something that is life giving and life changing would you come today? Would you come?